What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lose Your Ass podcast on this beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yes. We have a super cool show in store tonight. We're going to be joined by PJ Savage. Deirdre is going to run it down for us. As he always. is currently the WUW World of Unpredictable Wrestling heavyweight champion. He was trained by WWE Hall of Famer Johnny Rods. This guy's incredible. Watched a lot of his stuff. He's gone against some big guys in the industry. I can't wait to talk to him and learn more about him. Now he's coming in right now. Plus, when you have a name like Savage, come on. I'm Savage. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been thinking. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's my favorite song. There he is. Good build up, Deandre. Good build up. Uh, there we go. You hear me? Yes. There we go. What's going on, man? Uh, not oh, too much. The... How you guys doing? Good. We like the gear. We like it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. How Love you it. doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's first time on Zoom. I haven't used this at all, so <laughs> this is kind of fun. Don't it worry. Is... It's always new adventure for us every time we do it. So. Yeah. It's true. It's true. So thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate uh, it. We can, can't wait to get started and start talking to you about some of your uh, your background in wrestling. And we watched, I watched some of your highlights today from your YouTube. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I want to kind of go back from the start. What got you started in wrestling? I know that you were trained by uh, Johnny Rods, which is incredible, just based on his body of work with the guys that he trained. Um, I think he trained like half of ECW. Yeah, basically the whole, basically the whole uh, foundation of ECW with Johnny Rods, guys. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so the start of it was about uh four or five years ago, and uh, thinking about doing it, I was in a bad place in my life. Um, I needed to do something. I loved wrestling since I was a kid. Uh, it's the old cliche story of loving wrestling since you were four years old. Uh, I will. My first wrestling event was WrestleMania 10, and I was four years old. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. so that's the, just to give you the insight on it. And uh, back, fast forward, for, I think it was uh, 2016 or 15, and uh, looking up wrestling schools, and uh, Johnny Rod's school kind of came across my plate. I didn't think anything much of it. And uh, one of my old jobs, a friend of mine goes, hey, you ever thought about wrestling? And this was like two days after I looked it up. And I was like, uh, yeah, kind of. I've, I've actually been thinking about it recently. And uh, he goes, uh, you should check out Johnny's. Johnny Rods is a WWE Hall of Famer. And I was like, just looking the place up. He's like, go down there and check it out. And uh, one of my biggest fears was, and now, I, now, now that I look back on it, I laugh at it. But uh, I didn't want to get into it because I thought I was too small. I thought I wasn't a, you know, a big guy. Um, and uh, I remember the deciding fact that somebody told me John Cena was like 5'11". <laughs> I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm six foot even. So this, this kind of puts me in the ball game, right? <laughs> so uh, I walk into Johnny's office and the first thing he tells me, he goes, hey, big guy, take a seat right next to me. And uh, this was 10 a.m. I got into his office. I didn't leave that office till 12, 12, 12 at night, midnight. Wow. wow. Yeah, he actually drove me home a uh, whole nine yards. I stood there all day. Uh, it was quite the experience. But but for me, when I go back to that time, that was it was a bad place for me. Uh, one of the things that made me make the leap was uh, Raw was in town one night. And uh, I used to live across the street from the Barclays Center. And I came out of work. I was walking home, and all the wrestlers are there, everybody, all the – fans and everything were just outside and the place was going crazy and I, I remember walking towards the back of the Barclays Center and I saw the WWE trucks I saw cars going into the building and I just stood there for at least an hour and a half two hours I didn't move I just stood there looking at the production trucks and wow. I just I ended up crying because it was just one of those things for me that I just wish I was inside I just wish I was one of the boys and <clears throat> I, I didn't want to be a fan and it's nothing against 
being a fan. Wrestling has the greatest fans I've ever met in my life. They're, those fans are the most passionate. They are the reason we love professional wrestling, but I wanted to be inside those doors. I wanted to be one of the boys and uh, sitting in Johnny's office that day made me feel like one of the boys. Yeah. So that's why I, I just couldn't find myself to leave. And uh, he literally just laid it all out in front of me and I started two days later. That was that was the beginning, tr the true, true beginning of me starting with Johnny. And it's true because you always hear all these rumors about how, especially with like Vince McMahon, he only likes you got to be over six foot two and you got to be jacked. And then yep. you look and you look back in the day and that was true. And then you look now and like some of the biggest stars are uh, small, like small guys, you know. Adam Cole's 5'7", AJ Styles 5'9", okay. 5'10". Five, a lot of guys that are the standard bearer now are, are right. guys that would make me look like a giant in the ring now. So I guess <laughs> I'm getting into business at the right time. Right, right. <laughs> Hornswoggle kicked open the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a, a trailblazer, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, PJ, looking back, what or who has been – your greatest influence in your career? Um, it's, it's two guys. Uh, I would honestly say Triple H. Uh, okay. He's a guy that I've, I, I was at the garden the day he came back from uh, his injury, the jean jacket return. Oh, and wow. I, that was the moment in my young life where I just, I, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a superhero. I wanted that reaction. I wanted to make 10,000 plus people feel like that. So that was a big moment for me, and I kind of just gravitated towards him. Um, and since I was a kid all the way up to now, it's Bret Hart. Bret Hart has been a huge influence on me, from especially since I became a professional wrestler. From a study standpoint, Bret Hart has the wheelhouse. He has everything, the library you want to go into, and uh, I respect everything he does. And Bret Hart has been a huge influence yeah. on me. I love that Triple H right there. I remember being a kid and just going through massive bottles of water because I was just <laughs> <laughs> walking around the street. Yeah. yeah. Was, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure I got suspended a couple times for doing the, the, the <laughs> talk to a teacher or two. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was the the day that he came back that they were they didn't think he was ever going to be able to wrestle again. He had that yeah, terror. It was like huge. a year and a half long of of like rehab. He missed like that big invasion angle, which he probably would have been front and center for. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably he probably would have been the guy who turned instead of Austin. Who knows? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it, he was he was huge for me. And then another thing about that was that he was a heel. He was a guy that like was hated. Right. But then to come back that night and every single person in that audience loved you and missed you. That that shows your body of work is is something to be respected. For sure. Yeah. I feel that way every time Chris Jericho comes back. That's so true. It's like, wait a minute, we hated you, but now we love you because you came back. <laughs> he's the perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the obnoxious guy that you just love to hate, but then when he comes back, it's like, that's my favorite wrestler. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then a yeah, week later, he's like, I can't stand this guy again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So do you have uh, someone that you're like, man, I cannot wait to get in the ring with them? Or even someone in the past that you're like, wow, I wish I could have gotten in the ring with them? Um, it's funny. I was, I was just having this conversation not too long ago. Um, it was a conversation of what would be my dream match and what would be the match that I would never think could happen. Um, and from to give you a backstory and to give you kind of an insight of where my mindset is um I, w I got into this business to be the best i want to do everything in my power whether it's studying training whatever it is i want to get in this business to be the best to one day put myself on that mount rushmore so if i had a dream match it would definitely be to shoot to the top of the ladder and it'd be against roman to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with roman the standard bearer and, and stake my claim. Um, and if I would to give you a match that I would think that can never happen, it would probably be Triple H. To stand across the ring from from the Cerebral Assassin would be oh yeah, a huge thing for me. Oh yeah, that's legendary. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so now let's flip the script a little bit. If you're in a tag team match, who would be your dream partner? Oh, 
Oh, that's that's a, that's that's a good one. Um, again, w- coming up and watching wrestling back, especially like in a uh, 2010, 2011, 12, I kind of fell out the WWE. I didn't watch too much. Yeah. Uh, so I was the kind of guy that watched a lot of Ring of Honor. Um, gotcha. Kevin Owens was. He yeah. was my guy. I I <laughs> loved that guy. I loved everything he did in the ring. He was a guy that I watched them. Him and Generico matches are classics to me. Right. So if I had a dream tag team partner, it'd definitely be Kevin Owens. It, it, bar none, be Kevin Owens. Right. He is a great heel. Like he's a oh, great face so too. Good. But when him and Jericho were together, like oh, when they were so good, <laughs> so good, <He> <laughs> so good. I think that actually took Jericho to a whole nother level. Oh yeah, uh, that whole storyline that that put Jericho even even like Jericho needed another level, but it gave him that that next that, level. I think it also showed that he could still do it, like because he's been going yes. since what the nineties. You know, WCW. He was an ECW, and to see yep. that he could still even in this totally different type of world. In the W, you know, in wrestling, especially in the WWE, from what he was used to, for him to still be able to do it and like be a heel without having to be yep. so raunchy, I mean, yep. yeah, and, and I believe that was kind of right after the whole he had to have that Fandango match at WrestleMania, oh, yes. which was kind of the Triple H mm-hmm. and Sheamus match and the Triple H and Ultimate Warrior match where you got to pass it on to the Young Buck, right, and uh. It was kind of like he was kind of fading after that, and then he breathed new life into himself just just with that right there. That was oh great. yeah, and I mean, what he's doing in AEW is incredible. I mean, the yeah, fact yeah. the fact oh, yeah. I I personally did not think that there was going to be able to be another wrestling organization that had the same type of push as TNA did that could yeah. not even not necessarily compete but be right there next to WWE and they're yeah. kill they are killing it with AEW. What, one of the things it's interesting you touch on I was literally just thinking about this uh one of those things one of the things about AEW as a professional wrestler that would make me want to go there uh makes me respect them as a company is during this whole pandemic where you got New Japan just came back last night Right, and that's a company that's been established since '72, and it, look how long it took them just to put a product out. Right. Uh, look how long it took for Impact to put a product out, and the fact that they didn't miss a beat, it shows the hierarchy they have, the the company that they have behind them, the people they have running the show. They're a professional company, and I think that's what adds to being right there next to WWE. Well, Co- Cody learned at the foot of a master. Like uh, Dusty Rhodes was an incredible booker. WCW yeah. did not go downhill because of him. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. And but it's it's true. Uh I just read actually WWE is on pause right now cuz mm-hmm. someone just just caught it which is they've been going too, but they've their company is billions and billions of dollars and years and years of Vince McMahon being uh, the best businessman alive. <laughs> like <laughs> Exactly. Except exactly. when he runs football organization. Yeah, oh. I know. Oh, man. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, man. Investments. Rest in peace, XFL. <laughs> uh, seriously, we've had a couple guys from there on the show. and It's probably got to be tough for them, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was it was a great product. Like, they were, you know, making moves. Like, people were actually paying attention, which a lot of people don't pay attention after the Super Bowl. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I was I was watching it. You know, yeah. it had that WWE moniker behind it, but then it actually, I actually inter- enjoyed the games they were putting on. So it was, it was a thing that you just watched. Yeah, it right. definitely was interesting. Plus, no, no extra point field goals. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. So PJ, did you play uh, any other sports before wrestling? Now that we're talking about football, because you look like you could be a football player. So I played football in high school. Okay. Uh, linebacker and running back. Um, then I, I grew up in Manhattan, so there wasn't oh. really high schools and stuff that yeah. had yep. football teams. So it was a lot of YMCA and Riverbank leagues. Um, but I played a lot of running back. Uh, I, I tried to play quarterback once. It wasn't for me. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say you could be a great fullback. Oh That's- man. Uh, 
one one time I got injured. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I got injured playing football. Uh, this one guy, he was the safety on the other team. He was talking the whole game, the <laughs> whole game. He was talking about how he wasn't going to give me anything. There's no way I could run him over. So, of course, second play of the game, I get the ball. I have a hole and a lane. But I look to my right out of my peripherals, and I just see him. And instead of just running through my lane, I run straight at him. <laughs> straight at him, lowered my shoulders, tucked my head, and I broke his nose in two places. Uh, but I also messed up my knee pretty bad on that. My foot was so mad. But, you know, it, 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 was a, it, it kind of felt good. <laughs> it was a little bit worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So you talk about uh, growing up in Manhattan and stuff, you know, obviously New Yorker, Ooh. as well as us. Uh, yeah, yeah, big New Yorker. You know, you've done some traveling. What has been your favorite city to perform in? Oh, man, there's New York because New York is home, but there is something about Philly. Uh, yeah. I wrestled in the ECW arena, and you've got some diehards down there. Yes. You've got some people in there that it, – it, maybe it was because that was one of the first times I really wrestled outside of New York was in the ECW arena. Okay. But just – Feeling that crowd and just feeling the different atmosphere and the, that building, the aura of that building, it was, it was it was different. So Philly and New York are neck and neck for me. There's some about those New York you know you know New Yorkers. Yeah. New Yorkers know everything about everything. They know everything <laughs> about baseball, basketball, football. Their favorite wrestlers. They know the inside of the business. So, so it's it's a different animal than being in front of New Yorkers. All right, well, since you said New York, what's been your favorite borough to perform <laughs> <laughs> The borough I trained in, Brooklyn. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of shows that come out of Brooklyn, you know? There's, yes. there's a lot of different venues in Brooklyn. Yeah, and uh, nice. whether I'm doing a, a lucha show or a regular show or a house show for Gleason's, uh, shout out to Gleason's Gym, best gym in Brooklyn. But uh, it's just something about Brooklyn, man. It's all intertwined. It's it's a good atmosphere. You can tell people coming out just to have fun and, and – just to enjoy the show that you're putting on. And Brooklyn's been good to me, so I love Brooklyn. Yeah. That's right. Deirdre, you won this one. I won yeah. this one. We got we got one. <laughs> I, I would say one more thing. Queens is probably a close second. There we go. Queens, Dude, you live Queens in Long Island now. You're a Long okay. Island guy now. <laughs> Don't. Now we put. <laughs> 21 years of my life. I'm a Queens kid. I don't even like this place. <laughs> <laughs> Queens, Queens puts on one hell of a wrestling show, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> PJ, what are, should we expect once this is over? When, what's going to be your next match? Are you going to be defending the title? What should we expect? So, uh, as far as the, the title over at Gleason's is concerned, uh, I would guess the, when when we come back, I would be defending the title. But uh, I, I actually wouldn't mind it if all the titles were vacated and it, everything was thrown in the air and let's see who gets it. Um, that's just that's the guy I am. That's that's the person I am. I, I love the competition. I'm a fan of the Attitude Era, the era of where it was cutthroat and you got the greats because there was multiple guys that wanted to be great. Uh, Austin wanted to be better than The Rock, and Rock wanted to be better than Austin. And I need that. I need that person in front of me to push me, so I can push them. And let's let's have a dog fight. You're a parody guy, where you want multiple great people going after something, not like the Golden yeah. State Warriors running away with it for years. Yeah, see yeah. That competition. Right. Yeah, I, I want I want competition. I want the attitude there. I don't I don't want to. Absolutely. I don't want to be the guy like uh, I all do respect John Cena. It's one of the greatest of all time. Right. John John Cena inside the ring, especially outside the ring, that man is to be respected on a whole nother sure. level. Yeah. But for me, the there's the attitude era, the ruthless aggression era, and then there's the John Cena era. Right. That era went all the way to about 2012. Yeah. And in that era, you had one guy. You had Cena. And you had right. a bunch of cast players. You like a lot of guys defaulted although yeah. I wasn't in those locker rooms so I can't say so but <laughs> as a fan watching it it looked like there was a lot of default like oh that's the guy so okay I remember one of just a quick story for you guys I remember 
the, one of the first times I went to Gleason's, there was uh, this picture of a guy. He was on the website and he was sitting on Johnny's desk. It was a picture of this guy. And I was like, wow, this guy must be the guy at Johnny's. He must be the right. best guy here. And I remember the first day I saw him and mind you, I haven't even stepped in the ring yet. The first thought I had was I'm coming for him. Right. This is the best. So this is the guy I'm coming for. And I know I rubbed him the wrong way. I know he didn't like him too much, <laughs> but it was because I made him feel uncomfortable. I was there two months in and we were cutting promos under a bridge and he's the guy holding the camera <laughs> and I cut a promo on him. And <laughs> go That's back, fantastic. You could go back and you could see that promo. I have a gray shirt on. I think it's the Game of Thrones shirt. Um, right. Acting like I'm jogging. It's on the YouTube page and I literally cut a promo on him. And uh, I, I, I needed it to be known that I was coming for the best. Whoever the hell it was, whoever was in front of my face, I'm coming for you. Yeah. So, but even with I am. even with Cena, like yes, he was the he was the the, the prize possession. But Cena wouldn't be anywhere without Randy Orton. You need yes. Batman has the Joker. Like you need that rivalry unless it's not real. Like in, Golden State did have the Cavaliers. They killed the Cavaliers, but it was the it was that rivalry. <laughs> without that without that person, you can't elevate to that level of extreme. I mean, you know, the Bulls didn't really have anyone, but you know, you can't. Uh, I mean, well, you won six. You almost won six straight. Well, it puts you in a whole nother atmosphere. Exactly all, what Cena did, you know. But also, they did have the bad boys that made them who they were. Like you have exactly. that bad guy who makes you who you were. I have James, which is why I'm so much. I'm doing better because he's my rival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got somebody pushing, you know. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's a whole different animal. It's a it's a different animal. It, and there is something to speak to that, but there is also something to say when you have those people there and you have a second. But when you look at Rock and Austin, no one knows who's second. Right. You're going to get the crowd split in half and say yep. it's 50-50. Right. And, and that's kind of what I want to be, one of the people that leads the charge and bringing that back into wrestling where we bring so many people into it where they don't know who they want to win. They don't know who to cheer for, but they know those two guys are the guys. Right. And they're here to watch, and you're going to have half that crowd chanting for Rocky. You're going to have the half that crowd chanting for Boston. And you're just invested. And I want to be the guy that brings that back. And whoever's the guy in front of me, whether he's there (laughs) now or he's not there yet, I hope they're ready. (laughs) So, PJ, we usually do this game that's called Rapid Fire, but we decided to do a new game with you, and it's called Heel or Face. We're going to give you the names of some wrestlers, and we want you to let us know, do you think that they were better as a heel or as a face? That sounds good. I like this. Yes. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to go with the guy that was Cena before Cena with Hulk Hogan. Was he better as Hulk or was he better as Hollywood? Uh, Hollywood. You gotta go Hollywood. Oh, yeah. You gotta oh, yeah. go Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, they were, the NWO was great. I just started. Oh, I was, was a whole nother level. I was too young to, like, start watching them, but then I started watching, like, I got the WWE Network, and I started watching them. I didn't realize what they did. Like, how they... Oh, man. But, yeah. If, if you haven't watched the Monday Night Wars, give that a watch. I yeah. study that over and over again, but give that a watch. And I, that, 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 that's tell what you I'm story. on right now, yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. I noticed that when you watch something that you've seen 15 years ago, and then you rewatch it, like, how the hell did I miss all this? Oh, that right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 Happens all the time when I try to rewatch a Nitro old Raw. Like, oh, I've been okay. watching 98 Raw. And when I go back to it, it's like, wow, there's actually some good matches here. All I wanted to do was skip to the end, but let me watch something here in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I started right, doing so that. Got... Oh, go ahead, James. What the hell, Deirdre? Sorry. Uh, um, I got Shawn Michaels. Oh, heel. Uh, <laughs> for me, nothing gets better than heel Shawn Michaels, 95, 96. Bret Hart. Or like, right, that D-Generation X era Shawn Michaels, that – if there could be one guy from the past that I'd get into the ring with, it would definitely be him. That oh, that 96 Michaels, Montreal Screwjob Michaels, where he didn't ooh, care yeah. about a thing. That's a whole oh, nother yeah. level, Michaels. And he was on top of his game with a hurt back. That's that's something 
that I want to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Okay. I got The Rock for you. Oh. Rock is, is split for me, but I would have to go Face Rock. Yeah. Face Rock is he's electrifying. You know, when the crowd's all chanting with him, the crowd gets behind him. He's He's a different animal, you know? Yeah. I do like, though, that him and Austin switched off as who was the heel, who was the face. It makes it more interesting yeah. than just having that typical, he's going to be the heel every time, like the Randy Orton, John Cena thing. He, we knew that Randy Orton was the heel every time. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Cena's always the face, Orton's always the heel. Exactly. I remember when The Rock came back to host WrestleMania and they like, announced uh, him in Florida. I remember I was laying in bed with my girlfriend – and his music came on, and my girlfriend was no longer in the bed, and I was launched <laughs> into the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, that, that's actually when I got back into it. Uh, um, I, I, I wanted to get back into it. And uh, actually, him making me watch it again just to peep back in, oh, Rock's back, that actually got me into CM Punk. And oh, I got a lot yeah. of admiration for CM Punk. That era of punk right there. Of course, I watched him in the ROH days, but best in the world punk is oh yeah, best in the world. You know, it's Doesn't very no better than that right there. It's very strange to see someone go against kind of like the Vince McMahon way of thinking, and to see him do it so publicly was incredible. Yep. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. I'll never forget the picture of the title in his fridge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was classy. It was classy. Uh, I loved every bit of it. Yeah. I remember CM Punk got uh, one of the kids I worked with at the time, he got him in massive trouble and got him almost fired from a job because he came in and he was talking about setting off a pipe bomb at work. Oh. Uh. And all of a sudden, there's three cop cars at the job, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? They're like, oh, he said he has a pipe bomb. I'm like, I'm like, no, oh. he's a wrestler, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he's gonna start yelling at managers and stuff. Like, he's not doing that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's awesome. That long is day. awesome. Very long day. That's awesome. All right, so next one, I got Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Oh, you gotta love face Eddie Guerrero, but. Heel Eddie Guerrero, especially in WCW, those Nitro days. Yeah. In ring, he was an animal. He was vicious. And I, I, I got to go with Heel Eddie Guerrero if I had to choose. Oh, yeah. Definitely Heel Eddie Guerrero. He was, he was also just like, even as a face, he would do heel things. Like, he was just a natural yep. heel. Yeah. yeah. He yeah, really he, was. He was the lovable heel, the lie, cheat, and steal stuff. Look right. at the moniker right there. He was lying, he was cheating, he was stealing. He was taking People off his boot like though. he got hit with it. Uh, you, you had to love it. Oh, yeah. I had to love it. Two great ones. I, the reason that we're talking about them here is that they did both so well. Yes. That you have to have this discussion about them. Like, they were able to play both roles to a right. massive point. Right. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, and it, it might seem like there's a lot of guys that have done it like that, but it, it, you could probably count about 20 of them. Oh Matt yeah. Max. Oh yeah. Matt Max. So like it's just they're great. So you're gonna know about them. A hundred percent. So I'm gonna hit you with your favorite wrestler. Was Triple H better as a heel or as a face? Uh there's nothing like a heel Triple H. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you <laughs> when you hate him, I remember he almost made me hate him in Evolution. When oh, he was with Evolution yeah. and he started rocking the little uh the handlebar. I was like, oh, what yeah. is this? When he what then turned this? against Randy, when he did, oh yeah, yep. he had them all, all do his dirty down. work. Oh yeah, it, it was good. It, heel Triple H is is especially Corporation Triple H, and yeah. I feel like that version of Triple H is a little underrated because it was kind of he was proving himself a lot during that era. And right. but some of the work he was doing versus Austin, especially versus Mankind. Uh, they have that, uh, I think it's the WWE 24 Untold with him and Mankind. And if you go back and watch that and you see the things he's doing, and then it makes you go and pinpoint some some of those matches and you watch it, it's like, wow, this this man was on another level. So definitely heel Triple H is, is something to be enamored with. Yeah. All right, so I got one more for you. Um, going to go with Edge on this one. 
Ooh. He Edge. did both great. He yeah. did both so well. Rated R superstar, the whole thing with Lita. Yeah. Um, funny thing is, my favorite version of Edge is this one. This incarnation of Edge right. coming back is is possibly my favorite. It looks like a crazy hobo with abs, <laughs> but I love every bit of it. Yep. This version, it's it's. I've never felt so so much realness come through TV when he speaks, and you can just tell it's a guy who thought he was never gonna have the chance again, and he's finally getting it. So he's not leaving it on the table no more, you know. Right, and he also and came this, back. This he's... version of Edge. Yeah, he also came back. He's a father now. You know, he, he has that whole family life. So you, when he speaks, it's coming from the heart because this is for his family. You know, it's a different, yeah. it's a different thing. When, like, when these guys start to get, like, families, you notice that. You notice with Eddie, you know, that you could tell the difference from when he had his daughters to uh, yep. there's just tons of them that you could tell when they're speaking from the heart when they got those kids. It's just different. Yeah, and, and a quick uh, little side story about that. Uh, when I first started the train, I remember the first day I was coming in, I was going into Johnny's. I had my bag put together and my daughter was there. And at the time, my daughter was probably five or six years old. And uh, I'm leaving and I, I look at how I get on one knee and I tell her, Savannah, daddy's going to give it his all. I'm going to try my best. I don't know if daddy's going to be too good at this, but I'm going to try and my daughter looks at me and she goes, Dad, don't worry. I'm going to have your, your figures and all your belts hanging oh. on my wall when I get older. And I closed that door and the fire lit under my ass <laughs> like never before. <laughs> right. And it was just something something about having kids and having that family. It, it adds the added passion and determination. All that mixed into one thing. It's, it's something that can't be matched. Yeah, I had, like, I know I had spoken about doing a sports podcast for a long time for like two or three years. And then a few months ago when I found out that my girlfriend was pregnant, I was like, all right, we're making the podcast like tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) That's all all the the, the motivation you needed right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It got me going and uh, it's going to be a girl. So congratulations. Welcome to the, welcome to the club. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're just talking about that, I was like, yep, that's really it right there. <laughs> yeah, it really is, man. It, 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 wait till they start speaking and they start developing their own personality. Yep. It's a, it's a whole different animal, man. It, having a kid is, is probably the best thing that has ever happened to me besides wrestling. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you, PJ, for coming on the show. We had a blast with you. We cannot wait to have you back. And just for all of our listeners who love the gear, where can we get the gear? Uh, the gear right now, we're working on it, but it's going to be, of course, on Pro Wrestling Tees. We're going to set a link up. Beautiful. Uh, gear's oh. coming. And uh, for all the social media, it's PJ Savage underscore on Instagram and Twitter and on YouTube. Perfect. We've, we're subscribed. We can't wait to see what comes uh, more from you. We love your stuff. Thank you so much for joining us, PJ. I appreciate you guys so much for having me on the platform. Appreciate it dearly. Thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And man. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Thank Stay you. Safe. Appreciate it. Well. All right. That was PJ Savage, everybody. He's a savage. Oh, oh he's, he's great. He's great. Uh, he's super supportive of our podcast. Um, and Dirty Heels podcast, which if you're not following, follow. They're incredible. Uh, yes. Podcast got to stick together. Uh, PJ is awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. Once we get the link for his stuff, we are gonna buy all of it. That savage shirt is savage. Literally savage. Yes. yes. Legit savage. All right, and that is it for our interview tonight. And we will be back tomorrow with some fun stuff. I got my 47 brand mystery bag so i will do that tomorrow you should yeah (laughs) yeah i was just ignoring it i was doing you a favor by ignoring it hey we'll be back for more tomorrow yes we will stay safe stay well